Okay, dokie, so ever since I posted this video right here, the comment section has been barraged with me wanting to check out the leopard gecko thing. You gotta check out the leopard gecko breeding. You should look at what she's doing with the leopard gecko breeding. What she actually did with the leopard gecko breeding. It's weird, it's bizarre, it's so strange. And I guess, uh, I guess that's what we're doing today. This is gonna be the last one. This is gonna be the last one in the saga. I can't do these, man. I mean, that last one, oh God. That last one hurt my brain, man, and I'm very, <laughs> I'm reluctant to do this one, but you guys, after so many comments I've asked me about it, I guess at some point you gotta be like, all right, time to buckle up, let's get into this. Let's look at another very bizarre video. Can't do this one alone, folks. I can't do it by myself. We're gonna have to bring in the co-hosts. Let's go grab them. We got two co-hosts today. We've got Dante the Blue and Gold Macaw, and actually Annabelle's under here on Java Wood stand, so she's just out of reach. I'm trying to move. This might be our first quiet video. I'm gonna just bring the birds right next to me, and maybe they won't be as loud as when they're in the other room. You can hear me talking. Step up. Step up. Okay, fine. <laughs> okay. Hey. Okay, so I, I'm i not sure which one it is. You heathens told me to watch these leopard gecko videos, but you didn't link the leopard gecko videos. So I'm get, I see my leopard geckos had babies, and OMG, they're so cute in parentheses. And then we also have baby leopard gecko giveaway. Ugh. This is gonna be a bad one, isn't it? This is not gonna be a fun video. I guess we'll start with um, this, the babies, and then I'll go to that one. All right, <coughs> let's see what we got here. Two babies that I have that Sylvia and Rune made together. <laughs> why do you guys make me watch these videos, man? Like, why do you put me through this? Is it because you don't like me? Is that what it is? is are all my subscribers <coughs> and fan base, is it just a big old hate group for Dakota to get him watch this stuff, this? <laughs> <coughs> Why you gotta make me watch this stuff? So maybe a year and a half ago when I started to think, oh my gosh, like Sylvia is getting so old. What am I gonna do when she's gone? I love her so much. It would be nice to maybe breed her with Ruin. First of all, it would be a cool experience for me. And second of all, that way when she passes away, I can have still have a piece of her. <laughs> it's so weird because like, she's not even slowing down at all, but I was just working myself up and getting all freaked. What? Hang on. She passes away. I can. Have, she's gone. I love her so much. It would be nice. Okay. So. She, okay. So. She has an old leopard gecko that she thinks is about to die. Hang on. And so yes, she wants to breed said leopard gecko with uh, another leopard gecko that she has. Um, awesome. Uh, two pet quality geckos with uh, no lineage, breeding into a highly saturated market. Fantastic. Fantastic. But she wants to do it so she can have a piece of her? It doesn't work like that. I, I, I can tell you right now, <laughs> it doesn't work like that. I don't know, like a piece, you mean like genetically, you just want like her lineage to, cause like, I, I, don't, I guess I don't know much about leopard geckos. It doesn't look like a very cool leopard gecko, but I could be wrong. It could be like a really nice gecko. I don't know, um, but like personality and stuff doesn't transfer from breeding. That's that's not the case. I've had like, I mean, we take a look at my Tokis, my Crested Geckos, I have some that are like super chill. Like Pebbles, for example, the one that was super handleable and before I sent her on a breeder loan, she got FTS. Uh, we can talk about her, she's awesomely handleable but her babies are horrible with handling. Uh, my Toki geckos, I have like the meanest pairs I've paired together and they produce babies that are actually like pretty nice and don't want to bite and just kind of just try to scurry away. So uh, that's not a thing. That is, um, that's not a thing. And then you're talking about, what's up girl? And then you're talking about, you want to breed her to have her babies before she's too, before, so before she dies. But you shouldn't be breed like if she's like old enough to where like next year you think or in a couple months she's gonna die. You should not be breeding that as an animal. You should not breed. But then you go into the fact like I want to breed her now so she's before she's too old to produce, which means she's like I don't know years away from that. That doesn't make any sense. Which weird because like she's not even slowing down at all. But I was just 
working myself up and getting all freaked out that like I wanted to breed her before she either could you know got too old and could no longer produce eggs or passed away suddenly for some reason even though like she is not even still like a year later she's not showing any signs really of slowing down Buddy, I, I really needed that. This is gonna be a tough one. It really is. Oh, please don't chew my face off. Okay, let's rehash. Uh, so she wants to breed her leopard geckos because she thinks her female's getting too old, but not old, but not too old to where it won't breed. However, now she's stating that the leopard gecko actually has no signs of slowing down and she's just working herself up. So there actually is no reason to breed these animals. Uh, number one, don't do this. Please, please, this girl, this girl, this girl, dude, she's talking about how in the last video, she was talking about how like we need to be more responsible on video and being public because we're gonna give people the wrong impression by that it's okay to get all these animals. This is absolutely a thousand times worse than that. You are just stating that not only, you're just basically saying that people should just get, they're like, yeah, you know, if you want the, your, the life, the lineage of your pet animal to live on, just breed it. It doesn't matter what male's going on, who cares about that? Just go ahead and breed it. That is hypocrisy once again. Oh my god, it's real life hypocrisies. And it's just, it's it, it's irresponsible. I don't understand, I, I don't understand why she's doing it yet. It's not for that reason, because she literally just contradicted herself like 20 seconds in, oh, it, before she gets too old. But she's actually like not old whatsoever. She doesn't have any thoughts of slowing down. She'll probably be here for another five years, but it's because she's old that I want to be here. That makes no sense. It makes zero sense. Really of slowing down, so. I realize now that was kind of silly, but that's okay. <laughs> but it is. It's not okay. It's not, and you're totally being a complete hypocrite from your last video trying to stand on a pedestal to now doing like, just like basic irresponsible shit. I mean, this is rookie ass shit right here, man. Just breeding two geckos cause like you, you were worried that your gecko was gonna die for some reason. Why were you worried about that, dude? Like if your gecko's like, what? Like, I don't know, not old enough to breed, not old enough to not pre-produce. How far are we in? Oh my God, we're only two minutes in. No, no. And sure enough, they decided to mate. <laughs> and I started doing more research and something that is really cool that I learned is that leopard geckos, and there's some other reptiles and amphibians that are like this too, but leopard geckos are one of them, where the female, she only has to breed once during a breeding season to be able to- Hold on, hold on. Are you telling me you paired your leopard geckos and then started doing research? That's, that's what I'm hearing here. Oh no. Oh no. Use it whenever she needs to to fertilize new eggs all season long. I ended up keeping one batch of two eggs and then I had to put myself through a crash course in how to incubate the eggs because it's something I never had never. This is why you wanted me to watch this video. Okay. Okay, so let's get the timeline. Let's get the timeline straight, folks. Wanted to pair the geckos because the gecko is getting too old, but still young enough to breed and reproduce, and actually it's not old whatsoever, and it's still gonna go on for five more years. Paired the geckos in a controlled experiment type style. Uh, after the geckos were paired, instead of doing just a couple of weeks of research, because it's leopard geckos, guys, it's not rocket science, uh, but... Maybe take like the two weeks to learn about it instead of just pairing them and then all of a sudden be like, woof, now I gotta put myself through a crash course, guys, because I did absolutely no research before doing it. Because it's something I never had never really looked into before because I always thought I wasn't gonna breed my geckos. And here I was breeding my geckos. But here was my problem. I did not have an egg incubator, nor did I want to buy one because they're kind of expensive. And I also didn't really want to buy the supplies needed to make my own. But I did some research. So she made the conscious decision to breed these geckos but only kept one clutch of eggs and decided to just toss the rest? God, this is... This is more of this weird shit that I... All right. Oh, Jesus, you scared me. What were you doing? <laughs> oh my God. So, okay, so 
no research. We're just chucking that all out, out the window. Supplies and incubation, incubation medium and everything you need to incubate the eggs, out the window. We don't need that either because that's just too expensive. Uh, let's do some quick research real quick. Just uh, some quick research. We're just gonna hop on Social Blade real quick just for a quick second. Let's see what we got here. Uh, let me spell the name right. Uh, a net estimate monthly earnings of 1.7 thousand. And I know for a fact Social Blade lowballs the crap out of you because I make a couple of hundred more than I do than Social Blade tells me. So, uh, two grand, maybe a little under two grand a month. Uh, standard egg incubator goes for, you can get a cheap one for around a hundred bucks. So, I don't know. How, how many views does this video have? I mean, you probably made bank on this video. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, 30,000 views, that's that's a good amount of money. I mean, the only percentage of that would have gone to the incubator to do it successfully. I imagine this doesn't end well, but the other one says Gecko Baby Giveaway, so they made it? Alright, yeah, more context, I need more context. But I did some research and I found out that there's a more accessible way to incubate your leopard gecko eggs, which is you can just... Any statement that starts with, I found a more accessible way, um, number one equals a cheaper way to do it, the cheap way to go about it, which again is super funny because she was just stating that we should give our animals the best of the best in that video that I've uh, talked about like every five seconds, and yet she won't splurge on like a hundred dollar incubator and just goes for the cheap out method. That's what it is. The uh, more accessible method is the cheap out method to do it. I can't wait to hear it. I'm very excited to hear what, what the cheap out method is. ...inside the enclosure with the mom, as long as the eggs are kept separate from her in some way. And it's not like the female is going to harm her eggs on purpose. If anything, I noticed that Sylvia was hanging out by them, almost like she was guarding her little eggs, which was super cute. <sighs> Okay, number one, don't do that. Please, please, if you're trying to breed your leopard geckos, number one, take a hard look on if you really should and just decide that the market is heavily, heavily, heavily oversaturated with leopard geckos. I believe it's the third most oversaturated market only stemming, well, maybe fourth. We got uh, ball pythons, crested geckos, leopards, and bearded dragons are like the four most spread thing ever. So maybe don't breed your leopard geckos for starters. Uh, number two, don't do that. Don't, don't just put them in what I'm a I'm assuming it's gonna be a Tupperware container inside the enclosure on the heat pad. Number one, you're not gonna get the correct temperatures out of that. That is a number, you're either gonna lower your leopard gecko's uh, temperature, which is a, not good for the animal, which we're supposed to be doing with our best with your logic. Uh, number two, you're not gonna get the correct temperatures. An incubator isn't just putting it on the actual heat spot. There's a lot of conditions that go into it, humidity, the air temps around it, the actual temperature that was in the medium, not just the temp. You don't just set, oh God, I have to explain all this. You don't just set, I don't go to my incubator and I don't just set the thing at 90 degrees on the heat tape and then all of a sudden the eggs are incubating at 90 degrees. That's not how it works. You need a separate probe to check it out. I have my sea servants incubator. That does the heat tape's actually nowhere near the eggs whatsoever. It's the air temp that you need to get to that 90, 89, whatever temperature you're using for the incubator. This doesn't work. Oh, oh, almost forgot. Um, also, leopard geckos have no parental instincts. They're not like crocodilians, toke geckos, crocodile skinks, anything like that. Uh, leopard geckos, uh, anything like that, leopard geckos, bearded dragons, they'll actually eat their babies like right off the bat. Uh, even crested geckos will do it. They'll literally just eat their babies because they think it's food and they'll give literally zero craps about the eggs. They'll, they'll trample the eggs, they'll eat the eggs. Uh, even with some of my other species, my Arguses and my uh, Acne Monitors, I've noticed, eat my eggs if I don't pull them fast enough. So no, your leopard gecko's not guarding the eggs. Also, don't, that's misinformation, don't follow that either. And it's a good substrate for that because it's airy enough that it doesn't let the eggs stay too moist and get moldy, uh, but it's also, it also retains the moisture well enough that the eggs aren't gonna dry out either. So it's kind of that perfect substrate for that. So, and then I just, set the more more uh, breeding tips for you guys because this is actually what I do for a living uh, number one you can't just get a box put eggs in it and then put it in the enclosure and call it good I guess I, I'm guessing it worked out don't try it it <laughs> Uh, number two, uh, a lot of moisture doesn't equal mold automatically and doesn't kill the eggs. There's um, 
So there's a lot of things that go into it. Bacteria is a big buildup. Uh, mold is actually started with not only high humidity, but also stagnated air. So you need an enclosure or an incubator that's well ventilated and also has circulating air. So like with my incubators, I actually have a small computer fan. Uh, the Seed Serpents one is built in and I just have one on the bottom of my uh, little cooler incubator I made. So th that circulates the air temps, not only pre preventing the uh, stagnant air from be or the air becoming stagnant, but also making sure the air temp or that heat from the heat mat is actually getting up into the air, causing that whatever percentage or whatever degree you want in the temperature to be that correct temp. That's the the little container over the heat mat in a strategic way. It had its own little temperature probe on it and then I just moved it around on the heat mat so that it was it ended up being like half on and half on the heat mat which was the sweet spot to reach that 80 degree incubation temperature and then I just left it there I made sure to keep it moist okay, so this is what I presumed um, so she's either cooking the eggs way too high for what she wanted which was two girls I believe or she's totally underdoing her heat and that gecko isn't getting the correct basking temps from that heat mat um, Unless, which uh, from what I'm standing is she didn't want to splurge on the extra uh, $100 incubator, $80, you can go at the Exoterras or like 80 bucks now or something like that. Um, so I, I'm guessing what she did is, uh, so obviously she doesn't want to splurge money. She didn't get something like the Herpstat 2 or the VE200 that actually has multiple probes you can set in and it dials out. You're only using one heat mat. It doesn't matter how many probes you have because it's only going to correct one way. Well, it only gets plugged into one thing, so it's only correcting that one temp. So you either underdid your basting temp for your leopard gecko for as many days that these eggs took to hatch, or you cook these eggs and they're not going to be the right sex, which that's my guess because I see gecko giveaway. She said she wanted to keep these, so my guess is not the right sex. I was still continuing to do research about incubating eggs and raising baby leopard geckos and one of the things that I saw people theorizing about online was that if you bump up the temperature a little bit in about the last week or so of incubation you can help produce brighter colors in the leopard gecko babies after the sex has already been locked in so I did try that you can help produce brighter colors in the leopard gecko babies after the sex has already been locked in oh so I oh don't do don't. Don't do that, please. Oh my God. <laughs> genuinely, genuinely, genuinely surprised that these leopard geckos made. Please do not, do not purposely bump up the temp of your leopard gecko or any egg whatsoever to your, to get bright. That, no, that's one, one, no, no. That's not how that works. Uh, number two, there are a lot of consequences of doing that. Not only can you stem from getting deformities, from bumping it, so getting some, some more egg talk. Okay, so eggs are basically, like when you're pregnant, it's just a shell that comes out instead of doing it inside. So that animal is growing in there. When that animal is at that appropriate age, it's going to burst out of there and then it goes off. Now, when you have a lower temperature, that animal has more time to grow before its cycle's done. So you notice, uh, we'll take rusty geckos, for example, if you incubate at a lower temperature, some from 70 to 69, they'll take longer to go out but they'll actually come out as bigger geckos whereas the incubator at a hotter temp they're gonna be smaller because they're rushed out of the egg quicker that's basically what you're doing you're rushing that animal at the out of the egg so not only are you gonna risk things like deformities um, even stillborns you can cook an egg too much or if you mess with the temperatures at just like a, if you're doing like 86 degrees and you're like 90 90 degrees 95 degrees let's but we want bright colors I want highlighter geckos that's gonna kill the animal that's gonna cause a stillborn she did not release what temperature she did she just said she bumped up the thing and that's gonna get brighter colors again misinformation that is detrimental to the hobby and anyone watching her videos and thinking oh yeah let's do that because that's that's the facts that that's the information she uses or the mindset that she goes off of is people want to imitate what they see off the videos and what she's doing is like this is like one of the worst ways I have ever seen someone not only breed an animal, but incubate, like incubating eggs. This is the worst incubation. Not only advice, like she's saying this with confidence, like yeah, bump those <laughs> eggs up, get those bread. No, no. What you're gonna do is bump up those risks of deformities or bump up the life cycle to that animal to zero because it's gonna die in the egg. Enough, one of them had hatched. It was the tiniest, tiniest little baby. It was so cute and 
even for how small it was, it was like a perfectly fully formed, just a really miniature. Tiny leopard gecko because you forced it out of the egg prematurely and now it didn't have all the time to absorb as much yolk as it can getting to a better size, but uh, I digress box with the unhatched egg and put that in there as well and after a few days that one hatched too. I'm not really sure why that one took so much longer to hatch but I'm or it could have been from your genius idea to put one spot of the incubator box we'll call it on the heat mat and one off so they probably didn't actually incubate at correct temperatures thus that one taking longer to come out of the egg because that's what I had temperature incubated them to be but I must have messed up at some point I don't know if the temperature probe was faulty or what <laughs> maybe something happened when I bumped up the temperature at the end of incubation too but I finally realized after about eight months of having them or so that they're both actually males there wow I wonder what happened I just want to say, I called it, I called it, you guys saw it here first, I made the presumption, I put a hypothesis in place, and it was correct. They're so cute, oh my goodness. So for that reason and a couple other reasons, I decided that I don't want to keep either of them. Uh, for one thing, I feel like two leopard geckos is enough for me, that's plenty, you know, I don't feel the need. <laughs> She did all of that. A year, it sounds like, in the making of all of this. Almost a year. Just... <laughs> Just to end up with, you know what? I think two is enough, actually. I don't want these ones anymore. <laughs> okay. Okay, my guess is she wanted the two girls so she could cohab them inside that, whatever that extra terra was, and when it turned out to be two boys, she can't cohab two boys, like, whatsoever, so she'd have to buy another enclosure, and then she just came to the realization that she just didn't want to do it anymore, because she incubated them wrong, she didn't do the proper research, she didn't get the proper materials to actually do this right, so she just figured, scrap the whole thing, I don't want them. Uh, which, by the way, when you're cohabbing, just a tidbit of info, when you're cohabbing any reptile, whether it's male or female or female to female or unsex baby to unsex baby, make sure you always have a spare enclosure on hand. Because even though they're both girls, even though it's a pair, even though they're just little babies, stuff can go wrong and you will need to separate them. You want to make sure that you have the right, correct uh, minimum requirements at the very least of an enclosure so that animal can be separated and still have a happy life rather than just splitting an exoterra in half, realizing they're two boys, and then deciding, now nah, I'm just can get rid of them now. Was there anything like that? And I also wanted a female anyways, and neither of them are female. And also I just realized like, it's really silly to be planning so far ahead for like Sylvia to be gone because she's fine. <laughs> and to think, it only took 11 months in producing life for you to realize that this whole idea whatsoever was just silly. I think it would be really fun to do a giveaway with them. So I'm just going to be giving away both of these um, to one of you guys. And that giveaway won't happen until the middle of July. So stay tuned for that. But it is going to be sponsored by Custom Cages. So Custom Cages is going to be providing a couple of really nice leopard gecko enclosures for the two babies. And I'll be providing the two leopard gecko babies. But yeah, I just wanted to introduce introduce the babies to you guys. For oh, thank God, it's over. Okay, okay. Uh, number one, I'll just shout this out. I hate animal giveaways. Um, I was actually just talking about this to Renee earlier. We had someone suggest I do an animal giveaway. I don't like animal giveaways. I think it's kind of greasy. I think it's really weird to give away a live animal to just a stranger, just whoever happens to win the thing. It's a little better that she's sponsored. I think it's really weird also for custom exotics. I, maybe that's just my personal belief. I hate live animal giveaways. I think they're gross. I don't like them. I wanna make sure that I talk to my customer, that my customer understands what he's doing with the care of the animal, and then release the animal monetarily. Now that might seem a little selfish, but I'll give a little insight to you. Um, I, and this might be just my personal opinion on the matter. I believe societally with animal, with people keeping animals, 
the higher the price tag, the more care they'll put into that ammo, not just because of its life, but because they actually spent money on it as well. I think that money plays a huge part because people actually took some sort of sacrifice on their end. I, again, you guys already know this, I hate the human species, that's for another video. Uh, humans are very selfish animals and if something is given to them for free, I feel like, at least in my opinion and from what I've seen online, Facebook groups, things like that, uh, it's almost considered somewhat of a throwaway pet. So I always like to include that price tag uh, just for the fact that I want to make sure that people not only have their response, I mean, there's also other facts. I'm doing this for a living, I need to pay my bills. <laughs> that's, uh, that's one thing that goes into it, but I do believe putting a price tag does ensure just even just a little bit that the animals can be taken care of just a little bit more. Now, we're gonna get into some cons we're gonna we're gonna get into conspiracy theorist Dakota here because just hear me out. I might sound crazy, but Jennifer Lynx, in my expert opinion on being YouTube for a couple of years now. She's not just making dumb videos. I believe Jennifer Lynx is doing some big brain plays. She lost her entire collection, gave up her collection, and I, I saw some of the fish, like all of her fish croaked. Weird. I don't know much about it. I didn't look into it. I just saw, I, I, I watch these videos all the way through and then YouTube starts pumping more of her videos on my feed. So now I can't. <laughs> Okay, so I saw, I, I believe Jennifer Lynx is making some big brain plays right now. That pet tuber video, I don't believe that was, I, I believe she might feel that way, that maybe she has some connections, but I believe the majority of that video was for a view grab and it was bait because it worked. Tyler Rugney, Tarantula Cat, myself, although it's double jeopardy on myself because I did it for views, plus I thought it was just a really, really weird ass video. Um, they got people to react to it, people that have a larger audience, except for me, I have a very small audience. And then what those people did is went from our channels over to her channel to watch that video. That's like her biggest viewed uh, video right now. That was a big brain play right there. That was smart, smart thinking. I believe this was another one of that. I believe she needed to kickstart her channel back again. She needed to figure out something to do. So she was gonna do an animal giveaway. Animal giveaways do fairly well for people wanting to get views and get that stuff going. Um, I don't know if it's just me or if other people feel this, I think it's gross. I think it's a little bit slimy, especially if you're doing it for clout, especially if you're doing it for clout on an online platform that you monetarily gain off of. That's weird, dude. That's a little weird to me. So I believe that was a way for her to do it because that whole story, that made zero sense. I, did, I couldn't follow. 20 seconds. It's old. It's not that old. It's actually going to live for a long time. I was silly the whole time. I didn't do anything. I have zero overhead on this, but now I'm going to do giveaways to make a bunch of profit off of YouTube ad revenue. That sounds like what it is to me, folks. I could be wrong, but um, that story seemed just a little bit half-assed. I guess in the end, it's a little bit better in her case because she has uh, a enclosure company sponsoring the giveaway, which is again, just strange. Uh, at least they have proper housing. However, again, you have no idea what the care, I mean, maybe, I don't know. I didn't watch the giveaway. I'm not gonna watch the giveaway. This video is long enough. Maybe she mentions this and I'm just making an ass of myself, uh, just saying all these things that she actually dis or disproved. So I could be wrong. I don't know. I'm gonna stop talking about it. There you have it. Another Jennifer Lynx video. Don't ask me to make any more of these. This is my last one. I don't want to do them anymore. Let me do reaction videos on like exciting stuff, not like, not that dude. That's not my category. Come on, come on, DBCB fans. You guys know what I'm about. It's not that. It's not the pet tube. I like crazy. St I like crocodile. Make me react to a crocodile video. I want to watch crocodile videos. I don't want to watch some girl make some weird story about why she bred leopard geckos, only kept one clutch of babies, and ended up doing a giveaway ba babies that is sponsored by an enclosure company. The sponsorship sounds, it, it kind of adds to my conspiracy. I think it gives it a little bit more leverage because, I don't know. I'm not going to make this a, a 30 minute video going into this. It, it was a weird video. Riddled, riddled with misinformation. Please do not follow any of the advice that was stated in that video because it was all bad, really bad. I am genuinely surprised that the animals got out of the egg from there. <sighs> there you have it, another, another YouTube Reptile Breeder Reacts video. I don't know how many more of these I'll make. They're, they're pain in the ass to edit and I really don't enjoy sitting here watching this kind of stuff. It's just not for me. We'll get back to our regularly broadcast stuff. Uh, Friday we'll have, um. I might do a monitor taming video. Oh no, Friday we have the live stream. I might not do a video, we have a live stream coming up on Friday. Make sure to check me out Friday at noon. We'll do in our four hour uh, monthly live stream. It'll be all well and good. Well folks, that's gonna about it. I don't like linking my socials to these kind of videos. <laughs>
So, they're in the description if you want to see them. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be like, hey, you watched me trash a pet tuber. Join me on Patreon. Folks, that's gonna wrap it up for today. Until next time, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching the video, but goodbye, uh, hands thing.